Hello and welcome back to Josh Eddy YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about how realistic is the golf simulator? How does my game compare to the golf sim to outdoors in real life? And a lot of comments on the recent videos are like, how do you get a plus 11 handicap on the sim? Well, today I'm going to be answering some of them questions and hopefully I can lead you in the right directions to shoot in super low scores on the sim. So first up is going to be about the setup. Now, the setup never changes, right? We have got the perfect lie every time. We've got perfect lines if you're all set up correct. And that is one thing that I would say, if you want to start shooting super low scores on the sim, make sure your setup is just perfectly square with your target. So when I've got the projector on, I've got the line on the screen, everything is lined up perfect. Now, what that means is when I look up, I know my center line is right down this line here. Um, I'm just squaring myself up with the target right down this line and that is probably the main difference for me long game wise. Long game I'm a lot better because my setup is super good every single time. You know I've got a mirror behind me so I can see in the mirror um, you know the lines on the floor and then the, the line on the net. I, I've just got three lines to get myself perfectly in target and then you just go from there. And then all it is really long game wise is getting the numbers right. So as time goes on, you start to get your wedge numbers dialed in. I've got three different swings with my wedges. So um, I would say firstly is going to be set up, um, getting your lines correct. Second is going to be distance control, right? So what I like to do with the wedges is get three different numbers. Um, this just you know helps so much when I'm inside 100 yards or 120 yards on the sim. I'm dialed in, I've got a number with every single wedge. So I've got three positions. Now, the first one is a 60 nine o'clock swing. So left arm is parallel to the ground. This is another name for calling it nine o'clock. Um, my second swing is gonna be a 10 o'clock, which I like to call right shoulder. It's a really good feel. I go to the right shoulder till my left hand is in line with this right shoulder. Lovely feel, give that one a go. And then the last one is obviously a full swing. So that's three numbers I build up to know with my wedges, every single one, 60, 56, 52 in a pitching wedge, I know that I can do them certain length swing and produce a number. Now, that's the same indoors and outdoors. I would just say that the strike and the distance control is a lot easier in here because of the uh, contact between the club and the ball. You're not getting grass in between the ball and the, and the club, which can lower the spin rate up the launch, ball goes further. Um, in here, you know, you've got the perfect lie every single time. So long game wise, you've got two factors. I would say you've got your setup and then you've got your distance control. That's gonna be how you dial in them low scores. Distance control, even with the long irons, you've got to know your numbers. If you're 150 away, you've got to have that 150 number. So that's that's the two parts. Get your setup good and get your distance control good. Moving on to the short game. So short game on the simulator. Now, for me, I've dialed this into a certain degree, um, but a lot of people I do see struggle in this area. How do you visualize it? You know, when you're out on the course, you're seeing that landing spot and you get so much visualization and feel out of it. But in the sim, people lose that. I don't. I get the projector up. This projector helps me a lot. And I kind of visualize where I want to land it by looking at this screen in front of me. So I'm visualizing landing this ball kind of around this mark. I know that the flag's at 26 yards. So probably going to get a bit of release, 20 foot maybe. So we're going to land this now at around about 20 yards, releasing out to this top tier. And that's just my visualization in here. And I can still get the feel and visual visuals that I do out on the course in the sim. It's just a little different. So we're 26 yards away. We're gonna try and land this at about 20 yards, releasing out. 19.2, absolutely spot on. You know, um, <laughs> I don't know if that was luck or skill, but we're gonna say that was skill. 19.2 um, yards carry there. Landed on top of the slope, little bit to the right. That's my feel in the sim. You know, I still get them real life golf course situations in here. And I think that's the beauty of it is 
trying to make this as real as possible. So that's the short game. We're gonna move on to a few different lies now and talk about how that affects the chip shots. Okay, so bunker play. How does the bunker play react different on the sim? So bottom right, you can see we're in the sand. We've got an all right lie. And this is gonna add about 30% to the total number. So we're gonna play this one for around about 26 yards. Now, it is to mention your spin rate is gonna be reduced from this golf shot. Because we're out the sand, the spin rate is now gonna drop. So to get that spin rate back on it, we're just gonna get it from height rather than spin. So landing at 22, release out, not a bad golf shot. And you can see there, that one still stopped quite quick, even though there wasn't a lot of spin on it. But the bunker shots, you've got to play them as if you're in a trap as well. You know, get some height on it, get some elevation, get low to the ground, open the face, and hit that good flop shot out of the bunker as you would in real life. Okay, so now we're in the deep rough. Bottom right, you can see that we've got a lie as well. 7.2 down and two degrees to the right. So this one's gonna come out slightly to the right, not too much but seven down. So this is gonna dramatically decrease the launch angle. Um, this shot is gonna be brutal. Deep rough, I would say is 30% as well. That's another 30% rule. And it's also to mention the higher you hit it out of deep rough, the less it will affect it. So if you hit something really low out of deep rough, it's gonna get really hurt by that total number and the power is gonna decrease and the spin's gonna massively decrease. But if you get some elevation, it helps you out with that total number a lot. So 21 yards, we're gonna add 30%. We're looking at around about 25, 26. Now we're gonna to have to hit this one super high, 7.2 down. And you can see this is all downhill to the flag as well. So literally this one is a hit and hope, as it would be in real life as well. Good total number, sit. And not an awful golf shot. We should be dancing if this doesn't roll off the green. But you can see there, that is brutal. That is as real as real life. You know, if you miss that slope long, you're gonna roll down it. So there you can see, we have to hit this one a lot harder out the deep rough to what you would if you was in a fairway lie because these lies affect how the ball comes out, which is, is brilliant. You know, it, it makes the sim a lot more true to real life. This one might be a better number. Lovely. There we go, second time lucky. So, bunker play, 30%. Deep rough is gonna be 30% as well. Rough, when you're in the rough, I would say I'd work on a 5% number. I wouldn't add too much onto it or think too much. Spin's gonna maybe drop a little bit and obviously fairway's a perfect lie. So, that's the lie interaction done. Let's move on to the main one, putting. So, last but not least, putting the most important one on the simulator now for me this is where i gain all of my shots um the long game and short game doesn't really change too much when i get out on the course i feel like my long game's still in a pretty good place and uh if we swing it the way we are on the sim with setup i'd say that's the only difference is setup so when i'm out on the course my setup can differ a little bit but when i'm in here my setup's perfect every time so if we can translate that to the golf course we should be pretty good but this one here, putting, is, is just where we pick up so many shots. Now, on the golf course, I'm looking at around about 28, 29 putts on a good day. On the sim, you know, if I have a good day, you can literally have 20 putts, which is, you know, unheard of. So, we've got 15 foot here, right to left. Now, there's a reason why my putting's better in the sim, and I think that's all down to just green reading. Pace is kind of figured out over time. Um, I don't really work off of a system. I do it more on feel, like I was saying about the chip shots earlier. Um, I do it by looking at the screen and visualizing what would I actually do from 15 foot if I was there in real life. That's how I do my speed. It might not work for a lot of people and some people might say that's wrong, but for me it works. Um, 15 foot, right to left. You can see these golf balls or dots moving right to left now. These indicate the slope and the speed of the slope. So you can see there's a gradual break on it. And what I'm doing when I'm visualizing it and I'm moving that, that cursor to get our line, I'm literally looking down the line of the putt to see whereabouts my golf ball would be 
when it's about around about a foot out. So <clears throat> you can see in this first section, it moves slightly and it's kind of a consistent break the whole way. And I'm just visualizing this ball going along that line at a good speed and it should be somewhere around about in the hole. So the putting mat, forgot to mention the putting mat. So many questions on the putting mat. So this bit here is a hitting mat. This bit here is wood um, with a putting mat on top. Now this, this is key as well. When you putt out of this hitting mat, the golf ball goes everywhere. I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend getting yourself a little putting mat separate um, for putting only. So on my GC3, luckily enough, the box is large enough where I can have my hitting mat and the putting mat in it. So yeah, I mean, I'd say this helps a hell of a lot as well. We're getting a consistent roll every time. Right, so 15 foot, it's up one. So I'm gonna be playing it for 16 foot and let's try and put a good stroke on it. And there we go. So <clears throat> you can see a simple green read there. You know, that's the main difference is putting. Um, in here, I'm holding 15 foot as if I miss one, I'm actually annoyed. Um, but on the course, if you miss a 15 footer, you know, it is what it is, you move on. But in here, you know, they're not bobbling. Their greens are pure every time. Um, they're all the exact same speed. So there's a lot of factors that build into uh, putting and reasons why the flat stick is very hot in here and not so hot. I mean, you know, still good out on the golf course. It's just unheard of. You're not having 20 putts around out on the real golf course, but in here you can. So that's probably the main difference in score relation is the flat stick. But if you did learn anything new in that video and that did help you, um, I'm sure there's some points in there where you might pick up and say, oh, I didn't know that that bunker was 30%. You know, you give that a go on your next round and hopefully that helps. But there's the key differences between the sim and real life. We're gonna do some more on course vlogs later on in the year when the weather's better. Unfortunately, living in the UK, the weather is just not great this time of year. Let's just say that every day I'm waking up and it's raining, the course is shut. Yeah, you know, godsend to have a golf simulator. But if you did enjoy, please be sure to like and subscribe and we will see you all for the next one.